Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow. So, as we've said many times on this show, Americans are smarter than Joe Biden thinks they are. No matter how many displays of cognitive dissonance from Mr. Biden, or falsehoods, or to use a word, frankly, I don't like to apply to presidents, but must in this case outright lies, Americans see right through it. You simply cannot tell the public that there is no inflation when prices for food, groceries, electricity, natural gas, cars are all rising sharply. Even with the recent drop in gasoline prices, they're still up 26% over the past year. And as a result, working folks have been forced to take a 3.4% pay cut during that period. That's why I don't blame the railroad union workers for demanding higher wages. They're just trying to catch up to higher prices. They don't control the government's spending and monetary spigots. They are victims of very bad policies. Mr. Biden's zero inflation celebration on the White House lawn was a slap in the face of these people. When he says he inherited an economic crisis and turned it into a resurgence, it's just factually wrong. Now, folks know this. Factually, he inherited a V-shaped resurgence from President Donald Trump, and then he turned it into a crisis. And no amount of James Taylor songs are going to change any of that. The economy was growing at roughly 6.5% in the first quarter of 2021, with about 1.5% inflation. So far this year, the economy has contracted into negative territory, and more is coming. The Atlanta Fed's GDP tracker has now been marked down again for the third quarter from 2.5% a month ago to only 0.5% now. The CPI is rising 8.3% ahead of a year ago. And, of course, people feel this in their bones and their budgets. The Cleveland Fed's median CPI, which is a very useful measure of core inflation, well, that's now up to 6.7% after rising month after month. And as the economy sinks into recession, we are experiencing a price-wage spiral that is embedded into the economy. Now, Milton Friedman called this inflationary recession. Nowadays, we just call it stagflation. And Biden Democrats are now at war with the Federal Reserve. The former keeps spending and borrowing like there's no tomorrow. While the latter, the Fed, is tightening money. This is not a good situation. Actual inflation is 3 to 4% times the Fed's 2% target. And Team Biden's given Jay Powell and their company no alternative but to tighten even more aggressively now, which is going to harm the economy even more, which is frankly not what anybody wants, certainly including me. Instead of opening up all the energy spigots or reducing taxes or removing business regulations, the Bidens are closing the spigots. They are raising taxes. They are marching toward big government socialism with their massive central planning regulatory assault. For now, the supply side is dead. While Democrats scratch every radical progressive programmatic itch, think of it this way. The economy basically has no oxygen. Its blood veins are completely clogged. Mr. Biden continues to say this is not so, but the facts clearly speak otherwise. Again, Americans are not stupid. Now, take a listen to a leading Biden ally. See it for yourself. This midterm election is going to have a lot of energy from women and men who don't want the government, don't want politicians like Abbott or someone else coming into their lives. Enough with the nonsense of sending these poor Venezuelans to Martha's Vineyard or excusing a former president who has stolen classified information. Well, stolen classified information, she might know a little bit about that. But look, with the greatest respect, Madam Secretary, these left-wing causes are not going to drive the midterm elections. Now, I respect those voters who agree with you. But this election is going to be an inflation election, a recession election, an economic election. There are lots of issues in the air, but none are going to be as dominant come November as America's economic descent. But let me end this on an optimistic note. Biden's failed policies will be changed. Why? Because the vast majority of folks know that the policies must be changed. Men and women of good faith and common sense 
are going to change them simply because folks know change is essential to making America great again. That is why the cavalry is coming. That's my rift.